CSS in JS. It's a contentious thing. What is a front-end developer these days? What happened originally is you had the uh, the people who made pretty things, the people who liked the CSS, the HTML, they knew enough JS to make something happen on a page. That's the front end. That's where the web page renders, you know. And the back end guys are doing the APIs and the databases and all the complicated functional business. Obviously, something like React and Co come along. You're starting to do a lot of the complex programmatical stuff about rendering data and transforming information in the JavaScript in the client side. So now those people from that programming world have stepped into that. They're full stack. They are starting to step into the world of CSS. Suddenly you're starting to manage something you've not previously worked on much and don't really care for much. The first uh, assumption it seems that back-end world have made of it, of it, it's messy, it's clunky, it's all got all kinds of flaws to it. So they've proudly stood up and said, This year, Christmas will be ours! The attempt is to try and fix what they perceive to be problems. First one is scoping, so there's no guarantee that if I change this one class here uh, that it won't break a page elsewhere because I have no idea where this is being used in the traditional model of big CSS files. Second thing is about uh, where it's used, so you end up with big CSS files, you have no idea how much of it is actually used in the application because it's not kind of defined or assigned anywhere, you're just kind of aimlessly clicking around trying to find what classes are being used. The other thing is just about, I don't know, it just feels loose, it feels kind of fluid, you just have a bunch of styles that sit there versus that traditional uh, programming idea of everything having a very specific usage. So the idea instead is that we'll tie our CSS into our JavaScript, so you make an intrinsic link rather than just having two files that don't know about each other, and that way we can also use the benefits of programming JavaScript, we can start adding for loops and variables and we can start uh, making our CSS much more functional and programmatical. You're changing the nature of what CSS is and how it works. But it's even just practical things, is that CSS loads at the top of the page, it's that render blocking thing, it's about knowing what styles you need before the page is ready. And then your JavaScript loads at the end. Now at the end of the JavaScript file, it's going to have to unpick the JavaScript file to find all the CSS that's needed and then build those at the top of the page with instructions to the page and now start rebuilding the page with the styles that were made. So it basically has to download it once in JavaScript, then download it a second time in CSS and then rebuild the page. So it doesn't sound like an improvement on just loading a traditional CSS file. But there are different shades of grey in how you go about this. You could just link your CSS in your JavaScript application. So something like Webpack has the extract text Webpack plugin. Just means in your Webpack file, you make a basic rule for any CSS modules that are encountered, any CSS files, and say we'll use this CSS loader. My application, at the top of my component here, I'm going to import a CSS file. And that CSS is just some simple set of settings, right? It means that when Webpack's building, it knows that's not a JavaScript file, it knows that I need to now extract this as a separate type of thing. And then in the head of my document, uh, you know, the JavaScript is down here at the bottom, but it's just made a separate style tag up here, which has got my CSS for me, right? That way you're still writing CSS in a traditional CSS file in a CSS way, but you're attaching it to the component. So straight away the benefit there is that if you ever remove that component, you know the styles go with it. You don't end up with styles just sticking around and not knowing where they're used. But it's also uh, an understanding conventionally about the purpose. You know that those styles are for that component. Even though you could add classes in there which affect other components, you are at least uh, in your mind starting to think more uh, component level about where your styles are and how they work. That's the real thin end of the uh, CSS in JS world. If you want to go further then you can start to actually write the CSS in a JavaScript file. And then I mentioned you get some of those benefits of JavaScript, but you're starting to move away from the actual core CSS. So this is uh, CSS modules, which is popular. 
you write a CSS file, but it sort of has a separate structure because here I'm importing my CSS file as a, as a variable, but I can now refer to styles.classname. So it's actually like a JavaScript object. Down here I've got uh, other class name with composes and refers to this class name. So it's got a kind of extension thing here. So you're starting to write CSS, but there's some sort of secret JavaScript going on around. That's uh, murky, to say the least. I mean, think, for instance, that you, you need to do some sort of refactor. Say you want to move back into traditional CSS. You can't just grab this stuff now and move it back into CSS files. You've kind of muddied the water, and it's kind of one way. The styled components. So with the styled components idea, you are writing a, a sort of back-tick kind of long string. You can write regular CSS, but you see it's not kind of, it's not really separating these properties. It's just seeing it as one long string value that will be passed and turned into some CSS. Uh, but you have that benefit now of I can pass it props and then based on the props, I could render different alternate versions of CSS. So rather than having to duplicate hundreds of classes, I can just say based on the props, based on these variables, you could give me this CSS or that CSS. So an application that involved lots of theming would reduce the amount of CSS actually being written. There's a benefit there, I suppose. Uh, nice. The thing with this is the actual idea of a styled component. We can make this uh, variable link, which returns uh, an anchor tag, which is gonna have some extra props. And then here we wrap that in a variable styled link and we bake in these uh, CSS properties. And down here in the actual reference, we actually, like JSX, like uh, some sort of web component, you've built your own named HTML element. If you think about the way that the, the world that you see as a developer is a kind of uh, abstract view of what the actual end user gets. So even CSS that's minified, you're working in CSS that's different to what the end user actually gets. In JSX, you're working in HTML, knowing that the end user actually is going to get some version of this, but it's constructed from how your code is then being transformed into JavaScript, which then transforms it back into HTML element. So in this situation, you're working in components with kind of artificial names. You have no idea what the actual referenced real DOM element is going to be. And all just for the benefit of scoping in some styles. It just seems like a massive overkill and you're adding a real unnecessary complexity there. There's also the sense that if you've got 50 elements on the page, like a repeatable thing, it's now going to build 50 scoped CSS things to make sure that they're all completely baked in and none of the styles will creep into one element above the other. But it's missing the whole point of CSS that I can make one simple class that can be reused throughout something. So you're stepping away from its reusability to solve a problem which CSS was never trying to solve. The thing is, there were probably applications and situations for which a CSS in JS solution is absolutely perfect. I mentioned something to do with theming, something to do with um, maybe breakpoints or something where you really want the benefits of uh, a programming language and the actual styles have all kinds of tangible variations. But leaning to it as an out-the-box solution for any project seems kind of risky or just just daft, just some sort of overkill. There are so many situations for which a really simple CSS file with a decent naming structure it would absolutely solve your problems. So you can see this is continually being a, a contested thing. There's certainly no industry standard about this or sort of safe consensus. There are some very smart people on either side who hate this or love this, and really I guess it's about finding your own way. But uh, that's what it is at least. So now you can uh, just repeat most of that verbatim and sound smart, you know. That's all for today, guys. Uh, do like the video and uh, subscribe and all that stuff. <laughs>